Buckle up, people. This is going to be an episode. No shit. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure what the title of the uh, podcast is because I seem to be changing the titles when I feel like it and not telling anyone about it. So I'm not going to yeah. tell <laughs> This episode's topic... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Let's just do that. Is new toys, and we I, I I say new toys, but the first part will be about equipment, new toys, and and how the environment could impact our cognition, and then the 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 latter part will be extended cognition, which John is very excited to talk about, aren't you, John? Oh yes, extended cognition and how the environment around us, how we can use the environment around us. Which in is brain very stuff. in brain stuff, brain stuff. We're talking about brains, brains, sort of, but we'll get yeah, to that. To... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be such a good topic. I can't wait. So, um, the reason I actually brought this up was because I've got some new equipment and I haven't bought new equipment for like myself in about a year. Like, I bought the camera and that was it. I was like, cool, I've got a camera, I can live stream, I can do video stuff. We're all I see it in the background. Light. Is that a light? Oh, that one. Yeah. I, yeah, I got, I got three. There's another one there and another one down there. Um, yeah, so I, I got some more lights because um, my, my room's orange and obviously my, my video's teal, like the hue is, is orange. Uh, and if I put that light on up there, I get even more orange. And then the color grading in my videos is just a pain in the bum. Uh, and I, I, I do have one light and it makes one side of me white. And then if the sun is out i'm white but if i use the sun it slowly gets darker or brighter so like to the beginning of the video never looks the same as the end of the video <laughs> also i just have to say i just have to call out yep why is blue danny taking over the channel <laughs> i saw that so how, <laughs> how did people notice like <laughs> I noticed. I was gonna make a comment, but thought, nah, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. He may be planning this, but it's like all of a sudden, blue t-shirt Danny was like, uh, "Why is blue t-shirt Danny being the sensible one? Who is this? Who is this person? No, get back in your argument tin." <laughs> yeah, <I'm>... yeah. <laughs> it's. It's funny because obviously I, I made that change deliberately because I didn't think the orange would fit on the background well. Like I didn't know. So I was like, hey, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put the blue uh, and then leave the orange to the side because the orange person at the side had less to say because there's they're like argumentative comments. So I was like, I'll put them on the side and then if it works, I'll bring the orange person back. And no one will notice. Pa! No one will notice comments Everyone all over the place. Noticed. That was the first thing. I was just like, right. Why why is Blue Danny here? No, nope, he does not belong here. Go 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 back and argue. Why is he being the sensible one? This is not acceptable behaviour. Uh, yeah, I, I I may have to sh change up the t-shirts a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's really good. The, the I think thing, you could. You I could play say, with that. The thing is, right, the 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 blue that people have associated with me they're three different t-shirts so in in my head like i obviously i deliberately pick blue for that person like to the side but in my head i didn't make the association that blue the color would be put with that thing for everyone else it was for me so i knew what was going on when i was editing the clips because i can look at the clip and go oh that's blue that's that person that's blue that's that person that's orange that's that person but i didn't think for whatever reason that other people would pay that much attention to it but it's just now synonymous, like Blue Danny is argument Danny. Yeah, I really love that style. I think it is really like, it's something that is incredibly different that you're just not seeing. Not, not in seeing the just a different niche. Yeah, not in this space that we inhabit. I think it's, it is fun and it is fun and also educational and also allows you to pro provide context in a way that is f enjoyable, not just info dumping yeah yeah um yeah so I, I got some new kit to make myself look not orange um because so the video the new the no zettel custom video was obviously the one that we're talking about with the, where the blue danny's obviously i'm recording directly onto that wall so i changed the camera angles a little bit the, and the, the other reason i've changed the camera angles is because i am sick and tired of messing up lines 
Um, and I am sick and tired of trying to remember how I would articulate something whilst trying to actually articulate the thing, uh, which sounds really obvious. Oh, you, you, you just read a script, but just reading a script, you, you need a teleprompter. You, you, just, you just need one, otherwise you're staring at nothing. So I got a teleprompter. Now, I didn't use it in the video, the no Zettelkasten video, and I don't know whether I'm going to like it or not, but every time I've used it so far in my vlog videos, I'm like, oh my God, this saves me so much time. This is so much easier. And when I want to use more, not necessarily complicated words, but words that are more complex and require more precise wording, I don't have to try and fumble my way around using it and giving examples because when I'm speaking to a camera like this, I say the thing and then I think of an example to explain the concept or the complexities behind the thing. I can't do that in a video because <laughs> it needs to just be there. And I, yeah. I, yeah. And I, I didn't yeah. want to pad it out. So I was like, a teleprompter, maybe that'll be the solution. Yeah, it's really, <clears throat> it's really interesting for me with what i'm doing i just went the exact opposite way because <laughs> my big problem was teleprompting and trying to really flesh out what i was trying to say meant what i was trying to say was to it was lacking it was lacking a little bit of it was lacking too much context now i could of course go down the route that you're going down with having an extra person doing the context but on audio only that doesn't really make sense not in the same way it would be harder to do oh, i could, could shift it. you could shift the audio maybe like high or low um so your voice sounds different could do but that's more work oh not if it's one audio file because I, I record obviously the two individuals so i've got two two files one for blue one for orange and if you just shift the entire one of one of the files up or down or put some effects on it you could save an effect and just like dump the template effect on could um, do yeah that's true it's just an idea though so yeah but i'm not sure whether i think for your audience who are people like us that is kind of who we're talking to whereas mm -hmm. for me i'm talking to business owners so they don't I'm not saying they don't necessarily like it, but it's they want the quick and easy answers, which obviously I cannot provide and will never provide because things aren't that easy. Um, but it's about <clears throat> trying to create something that is easily digestible, which I think your videos for us are easily digestible but i'm not sure for gen pop whether they would be as easily digestible okay now this is interesting so this is something that i've been speaking about in my vlogs for a, 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 about a week uh, and it's applying cognitive load theory to what i'm doing with the, the conversations backwards and forwards and it's actually i i spoke about this literally before we got onto the call <laughs> like in my in my little walk around circle thing um in my, in my room and the so when I'm talking backwards and forwards, it's essentially the completion effect principle in cognitive load theory, which suggests that you have an example that you have sort of filled out, but you need like the person needs to fill in the gaps to understand what's going on to to get the the learning effect, uh, and that's what the talking backwards and forwards sort of does because misinterpretation and misconceptions, which are essentially the argumentative points that I bring up. They are points where you need to have a, a fundamental understanding of what the point is, the concept is, so that you can understand what the argument is. And then you need to be able to mentally complete it in your head. Or I complete it in one way and you have followed along that, oh, there's mm. a broken problem, there's a solution. I get it now. But if you don't have that base understanding, you need a worked example, which is the worked example effect <laughs> from cognitive flow theory. Um, and that worked example would be a, a, like basically a completed solution and the completed solution in philosophy, psychology, sociology doesn't really exist. Nope. <laughs> uh, so it's very difficult to come up with a worked example. Uh, I mean, to, to give a perfect example of this, which some people may be like, what? Um, and I will probably get into it in a minute. But the idea of long term memory, working memory, working memory capacity, density, et cetera. That's a theory. It's not fact. It's a theory. We don't know. Yeah. 
And there are, there are, believe it or not, other theories that say working memory doesn't work like that. It doesn't actually have that sort of capacity the way that you're talking about it. But most people don't acknowledge that. They don't think about that because it's just, oh, yeah, my working memory is low or I can't process all of this because of whatever neurodivergent thing because of my work. It's a base theory, base assumption that we all have. But unless you challenge that, you're just going to go with it, which is where a lot of people go. They go, information processing theory. Yeah, that's the thing. 1950, I think it was when it was brought up. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's just carry on. Uh, and that's the worked example that everyone bases their assumptions from. I, I think I find, what I find really fascinating for me, like just so obviously I've been looking into extended cognition, all that juicy stuff, which we will get to. We're, we're slowly we're slowly getting there. we're just like like apps yeah <laughs> done <laughs> we will gonna go try, there. We will. i'm gonna try we and make will. a linking comment in a minute yeah cool um so <laughs> one thing i found really interesting is the fact that the we have all just taken on this thing that the brain is the computer but then when you actually when you go when you when you think critically it's not and what what I really loved, what I really did love was the concept that it wasn't always it was seen as the most technical technologically advanced thing at the time. So it was a it could it was seen as a switchboard. It was seen as a you know a pump. And it's just like, huh? How fascinating our perception of our mind, which our mind has created, what our brain has created. It's yeah, like, yeah. ooh, that's juicy. So th this linking comment may try and help, or it, it, I, I, I'm going to make it try and help, um, but it may not. So the teleprompter that I have is essentially adding to my ability to function through a video because it is serving as an external store of memory, if that's the terminology you're familiar with. Um, it's, it's the store of memory that is outside of my brain, which is helping me cognitively function because to speak you need to use your brain in some way but if i can't remember what i need to say i'm going to use the teleprompter to help me do that thing the argument in extended cognition is the teleprompter is therefore part of my cognition because without the teleprompter i can't remember what i'm saying so i need it to function in that environment at that time in that context and if you extend that out using extended cognition that teleprompter could be your phone your laptop, your iPad, or a piece of paper. Um, and I'll let you let you go on a little bit because I don't want to steal the thunder. I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad you mentioned paper. <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned paper because my brain is, it, it, I find it fascinating we're trying to get off of paper, yet that that like people like us in the productivity space it's inefficient to be working on paper however the act of having a paper something to physically draw on is incredibly powerful and for some people that's the only way that that's that's their best way of extending their mind so you've obviously got um i think it's tom solid with the paperless movement and i'm wondering whether we're thinking about it the wrong like he's thinking about it the wrong way whether the paperless movement is not the way to think. Sorry, Tom, um, if you listen. Happy to talk to you about this one. <laughs> um, so, like, Quick caveat, he, he doesn't actually suggest everyone goes paperless. It's just that's what he's called it because most people that he works with use digital. He actually suggests to use paper when it suits you. Um, just as like a caveat, carry on. Yes, yeah. But I, I find the idea of like, maybe the paperless movement is the wrong thing we're thinking about. I think I think this actually extends, not just to poke Tom in the face, but I think it's it's literally extending to people like Tiago Forte and, you know, all of the people who are trying to, I think, take extended cognition and put it into the world of everyone, but are missing the, key nuances and are just making it and turning it into this marketable thing whilst telling people how to use it and how to think about it i find that really i think we're going about it the wrong way i believe it, it's the wrong way to approach it there's so much i want to say i know <laughs> um... i just i just like so from my perspective, just for context, it's like, 
I understand why building a second brain exists. And I liked the idea. But I think a second brain was always wrong. <laughs> I don't think second brain is the right term. It is not the right term. It's an extended brain or an extension of your brain. I think that's how, and that was the shift that I made with my systems. Like just to bring it back to what I do of like, your system is just an extension of you, which is something I've been saying forever, <laughs> which is nice to see that actually the science, science, it is. science, yeah. science supports that. That actually, I am not completely insane. Well, I am, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> that's a different conversation. Yeah, it's a completely different conversation. Um, but the idea that your system should start from you is what the science, like the, because it feels like it's right on the cutting edge of like what we know. Judging by the fact that there are no facts. there The facts are a little bit, So what... you can tell me I'm wrong. No, so the the irritation I have at the moment, it's not an irritation, it's just like a exactly that's the that's the problem. Um when you said science is in like question, you don't know if it is a science. Philosophy, social science, uh psychology is a science, but it's not a fact-based science, it's not a natural science. So it's very difficult to come to conclusions or things that you can practically apply because we don't know and we can't know because of the way that we currently conduct experiments and the amount of factors that contribute to philosophy, to psychology and all of the other social sciences. So it is a science because we are doing tests to find results, but most of social science is based on correlations and probability rather than yes this is a cause and that is the the difference i think between how we can think about things and how we can apply things because most people when they think of application they think of causes and and factual things which is natural science and they need to in in one way or another either dumb down the thinking either philosophy and the psychology so it makes sense in the the factual causal thing that they've made or they just take bits that they like, take bits that they think they can just apply and then leave it at that. Um, and sometimes that is deliberate. And I think it was deliberate on Tiago's sense because he has read uh, all, the, all the previous books because he has, I mean, he tweeted, I could get up an obsidian, but he tweeted a while back saying that his book is going to <laughs> extend, uh, further, further carry on the idea of extended cognition, but give the how-to about how to do it. And it, does and it doesn't <laughs> <clears throat> i think i think and this is actually a really interesting thought as i'm writing my book it's like my book is around starting from you it's around creating something that is built around who you are instead of trying to just follow what everybody else says instead of copying what others say and others do it's around going so this is me this is how i use my elements of myself that I have to create something that I care about, to do things that I care about, to help me to uh, live my life, so to speak. <clears throat> and the how to of that is the most complicated part because there is no one how to. And I think because of the, the mon meh, not monopolization, but because building a second brain has been marketed so delightfully, People think that's the only way of doing it is to create a second brain when really that's the exact opposite of what you want to create. In my view, you don't want a second brain. You want an extended brain, an extended part of you that has been brought from in here to out there. Part so of your to... thinking, not you. Extended part of your thinking, not you. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to sort of try and bring bring some concepts together so brain mind and cognition what do those three things mean to you are they different are they the same i think <clears throat> good <I> question <laughs> good yeah i think therefore i am that is my response good luck editing that bit <laughs> it wasn't actually that loud so <laughs> oh goodness right. um i don't think the brain and the mind are the same. 
I haven't got a clear answer on mind and cognition. My gut reaction is no, the three are different. But I cannot give uh, something you can grab onto. It's just a gut feeling that I cannot explain. Because I asked the question, you don't think they're all the same. <laughs> No, no, it's or, not just that. You, okay. It, it's it's also like if I really check in, interoception, um, like what I actually feel, then no, they're not the same. So this this brings up an interesting point that is going to be an argument that doesn't have an answer because it's philosophy. Um, Yay! <laughs> And this is where I think we, we may start to mo move into some like really questionable conversations, uh, which you know we haven't done apps yet and like tools and, and, and technology. Well, I know, I know. I'm going to bring it back. Um, okay. So verbs and nouns, obviously, are like thing is in English, but how you ask a question depends on whether you're seeing it as a verb or a noun. Is it a descriptor or is it a thing, basically? Um, and the brain is a thing. It's, it's, it's a mushy thing in the skull. Yeah, it's the meat. Exactly. The mind, however, isn't a mushy thing. You, you can't grab a mind. You can it's grab a brain. It's not tangible. Ah, cognition. Exactly. It's, it's the action of the mind. Action of the mind or the doing of the mind? Yeah. Ooh. Kind Ooh. of. So, yeah, that that's yeah. Exactly. So the way the way I try and visualize this to help people like conceptualize it is the brain is the mushy thing. It's all the neurons. It's the it's the connections. Mm. The mind is the electrical connections that go around it that try and bring out some sort of thought, something that is usable. And cognition is the ability to use everything that the mind uses, i.e. extended cognition, and actually does something to the brain. So that would be extending dendrites, creating con connections in the brain. It's, it's being able to cognitively assess what's going on. Again, I'm assuming information processing is true here. Um, it's assessing what's going on, with the environment, with all of the different tools and apps and stuff that we've got, bringing it into our mind for us to use uh, and then be somehow stored, again, assuming information processing, stored in the brain. So those apps and tools and stuff that we've got, with the, the terminology of second brain, well, it's, it's not a brain because it's not the mushy stuff inside your head. Uh, it's part Extended of the mind. mind. Exactly. So it'd be either part of the mind, i.e. it's something that you have um, that helps you cognitively function, which would be your, your, your notion, your obsidian, your, your phone, your whatever. Um, but then extended cognition could also be the environment because it's not something you have all the time with you because the environment always changes. You go inside to outside, well, that's changed. So extended cognition changes in the environment. Your extended mind follows with you, but it's still not in your brain. And then you have your brain. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And, and I agree. I think that is a beautiful way of taking an incredibly complex subject and not dumbing it down too much. I think actually that is the best way of explaining it. And it's interesting because <laughs> sometimes you have those moments where your, th where your own thoughts actually connect to the science and you're like, huh, cool. I actually did more than a thought. My whole thing with systems was systems are what you do. Like, they're what you do. They're not anything more than that. And I think what you explained there is is exactly what a system is. It's what you do. It's the things you do based on the context you're in, based on what you're thinking, how you're feeling, where you are, what you're doing, what environment you're in, what things you have at your disposal. So... This is why, and I think you'll agree, I have such a big problem with all-in-one apps and the concept of an all-in-one. I see how I did that. I thought that was beautiful. That's where I was going with it next. So yeah, yeah. that, that is that why too. I have a problem with all-in-one apps. That is the issue. I think that is the wrong phrase. I don't think there can be an all-in-one app. However, the idea of an all-in-one app is that there's one place for everything. That's the overall idea. I think that there can be a 
one place to store most things so that you can find it easier. Not one app for everything. A good example of this is me with Notion. Most of my worky worky things come back to Notion. Like, even though I have other tools that are now feeding in, they all come back to Notion. The only thing that's not coming into Notion is my Obsidian stuff, which is just me, my own thoughts, my own ideas that don't necessarily come into the business, although they do sort of, but that's a whole nother philo philosophical discussion for later, put that away. Um, and so, yeah, it's just like, do that alone. Box it up. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just put that in it. We'll just sit it here and we'll just look at it. That was from before we started talking. And the idea is, is that there can be one place to go. Struggling with the wording, so if you find a better one. There's one, <laughs> there's one position or tool you can use where everything comes together that can exist, but the dependencies is whether you want that and whether that's actually a good thing and that yeah, so... does change depending on you depending on how you function some people want to compartmentalize do so some people need to have everything in one place so that they can see what's on their plate <clears throat> which is often the people i work with in notion is like they need to be able to see all the building blocks in front of them because if they don't goodbye they'll forget about it because it's not in there it's not there in front of them right um so <laughs> here comes the rest of the percentage i have had my chance thank you very much good evening <laughs> um it's it's I, i'm gonna start this off with the conversation i have with thomas frank on twitter so i tweeted about uh, I, I, I tweeted about the all-in-one apps because they, like Thomas Frank did a great video with uh, Tiago Forte on Tiago Forte's YouTube channel. And they spoke about Notion as an all-in-one app. And following from what I've just uh, expressed using the brain, extended mind and extended cognition, I approached the all-in-one app. It, well, it, it, through, through my explanation, it can't be the brain because it's not mushy inside your head. Uh, it can't be extended cognition because an all-in-one app is something you take with you. It, it moves with you. It's either on a device, on a phone, on something. Um, and it doesn't drastically change when environments change, which means to me, it would be part of my extended mind. Now, my extended mind means that it has three, essentially three, three processes. Again, I'm assuming information processing is true. And the reason I keep saying that is ecological dynamics is different. Um, so, yeah. That was a rabbit hole. <laughs> that was a rabbit hole I put in a box because otherwise I don't think I would have been able to come up for air for a good three months. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to express how ecological dynamics changes how we think about information processing and memory, but obviously putting that in a video is effing difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it right now. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll box just, that for <laughs> I just got a vision in my head of my brain going, eh, <laughs> just throwing the much part of my brain. Figure it out. <laughs> it just got this person, like I could I could just imagine like lots of different different Johns, like one sitting on a, a bit of the brain, like slapping it backwards and forwards, like, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Inside out. Exactly. Um <laughs> just pushing levers and pulling levers, like we 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 know something. Um extended yeah, anyway. control room. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, back to the extended mind. Uh, and this this mind, this all in one app thing uh, has, again, assuming information processing, has three jobs to do. Consume information, <clears throat> process information, and then do something with the information. That do something bit has so many different things that I just say do something. Uh, I think I use distribution in the tweet. Um, but the reason I say do something is because it's not necessarily distribution. It could be consolidation with other thoughts. It could be convergence with other thoughts or um, divergence with other thoughts. Or it could be sharing those thoughts in any medium, which obviously has loads and loads of constraints and restrictions. Uh, I shouldn't have used constraints. Uh, loads of restrictions. Um, 
which means there are three different things the all-in-one app needs to do as part of the extended mind. But Notion isn't a social media platform, so you can't consume information through it. Okay, so it's not actually the consumption of information bit. Uh, it could distribute information, but not in all formats. So again, it's limited there. Yeah, no. Writing, okay. images, yeah. maybe, just, but mm -hmm. videos, audio, no. Exactly. It, it's got limitations there, which everything has limitations, of course, uh, which is why we use more than one thing. Uh, <laughs> and then the information store bit, which it does pretty well for most things. But for some things, it doesn't because of certain functionalities, features or use cases you may have, i.e. search is a perfect example. If you want to search for something in Notion, it may take you longer. So thinking about it from potentially like mis misconceptions of how working memory works. If your working memory, if we take a neurodivergent individual typically explained as an ADHD individual having a smaller working memory, again, assuming information processing, Notion could be an example of an ADHD brain because it's slow to search. <laughs> it's hard to find things and recall things. And by the time you've done that, you've forgotten why you searched for it in the first place. Whereas other tools are better at it. So you would choose that tool for something else. Obsidian would be my example. Mind so team. the extended mind can't be one tool because everyone is going to have different abilities to consume information. There's going to be different areas. Obviously, we have different senses. So hear, taste, like you can't taste anything through an app. <laughs> Not that I know of anyway. Um, well, actually, random fun fact in Japan, they have now created a this lickable screen where you can actually taste don't i saw it randomly i'm like okay moving on and she <laughs> sprays these like taste sensors which trigger certain taste buds on your tongue which make it taste like the thing you're looking at that doesn't surprise me because of one of the um case studies i may be explaining later on to give some um moral moral arguments into this uh which could be fun Ooh. yeah <laughs> you don't yeah, get on his high horse oh no no they're, they're they're legitimate law cases that i found which i'm going to be using in my video which yeah which really bring the question together and you're like oh damn uh i don't know uh, so it, instead of taking it from theoretical it, it's literally in law like the police were involved um so it's not just theory it's also like moral applications of how we can use this thing uh to to guide our actions and behaviors and what we should shouldn't do so yeah so going back to the all-in-one app very quickly to round up the extended mind can't be an all-in-one app because one app can't do all the different things that a mind does it can do elements of it but not all of it and that's assuming information processing which is what most people have been accustomed to if you assume ecological e ecological dynamics like just no just not possible no <laughs> and i also think like this to bring it because at the moment we're here <laughs> which is hard to put like in our yeah. heads but thinking in our heads for audio like, listeners did... he pointed to his head <laughs> yeah i did yeah sorry sorry Get over it. um like but if we just bring it back to us as humans the emotional element of that because i think that's really important because we're talking about really like this kind of stuff right in the head for audio listeners i think this also there is so much there's almost a click now, obviously, human beings naturally form groups. That's how our brains of blah, fucking blah, 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 blah. Group homogeneity bias. Yeah. You want to try that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> no yeah, yeah. This no, is why no, I need a teleprompter, yeah, yeah. because I could just read the word out. Group no, no, homogeneity no, no. bias. There you go. No, no. Look like you had cotton in your mouth. Oh, some of the yeah. some of the effing words that I have to read, and I'm like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "It's like a word salad on a page." Yeah, it's quite it's quite intense, isn't it? But as I was saying, like, there is a lot of like clicks of people. You've got the Rome people, the Obsidian people, and the Notion people, and they all think that their app is better, and that they're or and then you've got people in the general population who are outside of here just going. I don't have a clue what I need and everyone else is telling me I need this and I need that and I need this and I need that. 
and that one app will help fix everything, will simplify my life, will simplify my business. And then when it actually happens and they actually use the app, they realize, huh, no, this isn't simpler. This is constantly frustrating and I'm constantly struggling to actually get any more done. And I'm actually doing less because I'm too busy pissing around with Notion's stupid search functionality, which is better than it was, but still no good. And still working in a way that doesn't actually fit the person, so they just feel like there's something wrong with them. And all of these apps, because of how marketing is done right now, <sighs> because it's effective, around that of like just saying, oh, well, you're not productive, this can raise your efficiency, raise this, raise that, be better by just using one app, all this, this is just this, and it's all that, and it's just that. And because all of the science that actually disproves the entire thing is so here, People think they're broken. People think there's something fundamentally wrong with them when it's not. <laughs> yeah. So there was a conversation that I was listening to. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar with YouTube, you may not know these people. Hank Green. Uh, Who's yeah. that? Who the fuck is that? Um, if you don't know, he is the guy that basically, or he is one of the brothers that runs uh, Crash Course arguably the biggest uh, educational channel on YouTube. Uh, he also runs SciShow, um, and as in the Psych SciShow as well, uh, also runs like four different companies, has 50 people under him, all about education. So he had a conversation. He's a YouTube creator, TikToker, Twitter, like he, did, he just does all the things. Um, yeah, he was talking to uh, MKVHD, Marcus Brownlee, who is the biggest tech channel on YouTube. They were having a conversation. It's a podcast. It's the most recent podcast on MKVHD's channel. And the reason I bring this conversation up is they spoke about YouTube and TikTok and comparing the two. And the conversation went in lots of different directions for creators, but also brought up that YouTube created problems because it was so good at what it did. Like it was so good at being a video distribution platform that it created monetization problems that, he had, that it had to solve. And TikTok don't have the same issues because it's not as big in the same way. And when we use apps and tools, we are solving problems. But because it often becomes such a big part of what we do and how we function, it creates other problems that we didn't know we needed or we didn't know we had. And that's what I think you were getting at, like bringing in this new app, this new tool solves problems, but brings in new ones that you then need to solve. They, those problems may be better to solve. They may be harder to solve. But most of the time, because we're working with the mind in these apps and tools, the problem has gone from tangible, oh, I need this tool, to theoretical, how am I going to do this? And the theoretical problems are yeah. much harder to understand. Yeah. And I think that, and often we have, we've, I see when I work with clients, they're like, oh, I just, I think Notion's perfect. That is why I stopped talking about just Notion and barely talk about Notion on my socials anymore. That was deliberate because the work does not start with the tools. The work starts before the tools. If you don't understand how you think and work and want to work, how you do work now, how you want to work in the future, you do not have any think to grasp you're building on top of no foundations so you will just sink blame the app and that's why people switch between tools every couple of months because like oh that app didn't work for me so i'm just gonna jump ship what i loved was how um, so bringing it like associating it with the the metaphor that we've got currently with the with the brain extended mind extended cognition the brain essentially is the app it's the tangible thing would, would you want to change your brain every two months? <laughs> no. Nope. Because that's essentially what you're doing with the app. You're, you're changing the brain, the mushy part. Um, because even though the app is used in a, the extended mind, it's a tangible thing. So yeah. it, is, it is a metaphorical brain that you're using for extended mind use. Um, would so you want it is to building that? a second brain. It is... So maybe Dep building depending on the metaphor. Extended... Like, this is interesting. So now I'll... I'll come back to my point in a minute, probably, mm -hmm. unless I forget, which I might do. But like, is it a, is are the apps extend is that are the apps an extended brain rather than an extended mind? The way I conceptualize this is an app is a is a brain, as in like the device. And then the is... way that you use the app is the mind. Yes, that, that's mind. that's. Yeah. 
that's where I, that was that was where I was thinking. That's where my brain was going. Well, my mind was going. Well, my cognition was going. Which one? <laughs> Both. Um, exactly. All the things. <laughs> So the way I see this is the phone, I'll get into some examples in a second. The phone itself is a store of information. It's it's a thing, but without your mind, it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't act. It, it, this is embodied cognition, which is another conversation. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah well, well, that I'll, one, that, I've just started I'm, I'm boxing that as well. That one. I, I just, I just, I started, that's, where she starts the book of the extended mind is in body cognition. I'm just like, oh, oh, this is interesting. Oh. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to box embodied cognition with ecological dynamics and free energy principle. I'm going to box those. Um, so yeah, so this the the brain, the mushy. Enjoy those open loops, everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, they're not. You can't close them. <laughs> No, <laughs> they would never be a closed loop because it's philosophy and psychology. So yeah. uh, it's just you, you've got one question. I have like a thousand questions for each of those points that extend further. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> so the app is like a brain and by itself doesn't doesn't do anything. But when you put yourself, i.e. a system, a, a living organism with that thing, that brain, that organ, whatever you want to call it, Again, all of these are metaphors because it's an app or a device. Uh, then you can use it in your extended mind. So, yes, metaphorically, you could say that you you are building a second brain in an app. Um, but Jago talks I about think extended, philosophy. Uh, yeah. yeah, Jago talks about the philosophy of how to use your second brain, which is not like it's not how to use your second brain. It's using your extended mind with a brain that you've built but you could have multiple second brains so it can't be a second brain it's just a brain that we have that isn't in our head which means it's not a brain which means it's part of extended mind again there's no concrete answer because these are all metaphors again philosophy um so yes it could be seen as a brain this is where information processing and ecological dynamics like bash heads Yes, it could be a brain and store of information, but it's not really a brain. It's part of extended cognition. So they're not discrete things. They're actually the same thing, but they can't be the same thing because information processing assumes you have a store that you go to. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. No, but it's great. It does make sense. <laughs> but it, make, it makes about as much sense as it's going to. Yeah. And I think this is where like us as human beings have to reach our own... Conclusions. conclusions because i don't think that there is one answer here i think that's the there isn't there, there is our own answer our own truth if we hark back to the previous episode where we talked about truth but i don't think there is a concrete answer please fight me <laughs> it's not the right question <laughs> yes i think that's actually the best yeah it isn't the right question yeah like, i agree it, I, people... I wouldn't say that it's the right question i don't like finding an answer finding a con conclusion is completely pointless i don't mm. think that's the right question you should be asking so if you're looking for an answer you're asking you're asking the wrong questions that's that's my approach to it um, yeah but it's very yeah, difficult it's actually... <laughs> very difficult to conceptualize that yeah, I think I think it's. Yeah, I'm, I agree. Ev everyone's immediate thinking is, well, what do I do then? And to, to my response would be, something, anything, act, be, live, exist, uh, which is like, well, yeah, I already do that. Mm, is it intentional existen uh, existence, and then we move into consciousness, and again, another box that we can we can plop to the side. Uh, but yeah, we don't you... need to plot them to put. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I, I I do agree with you. I think this is the the infinite versus finite game that we're all playing. Some people choose to play finite games, which have an end. There is a winner and a loser. There's a win state and a lose state. But there's an infinite game which is continual and never ends and doesn't have a conclusion the stuff we're talking about are infinite games now we can have fine right just a moment i have to do this because it bugs me infinite 
finite. Fix your shit language. Anyway, um, because infinite, infinite, <laughs> infinite, it just screw those two words. I hate them. My brain gets really annoyed that they sound different. <laughs> Anyway, have you have you seen the language TikToks? Like there are so many words. You're like that doesn't make sense. No, I'm Though... hiding because if I go back on TikTok, I never live. I will never come back again. Um, but as I was saying before, <laughs> you can have lots of small finite games within an infinite game. You can have both. It's not one or the other. Mm, you can I don't have. Agree. Ooh. <laughs> I don't agree. Uh, well, I, I don't think the game can end. There is a... Well... That depends on your thoughts of legacy as well. Because even if your body dies, does your mind, because the things that you produce create the people you talk to, the environments you've been in, do they continue? Yes, I believe that they do. Which is why I think there is no such thing as an end game. Even if you die, the game hasn't finished. It's just different. Depending on your approach, obviously, um, embodied cognition suggests that obviously when you die, that's it because you as a body, as a thing stopped, but your influence on other embodied cognitions doesn't. So how you, how you take that yourself is up to you. Like your influence in the environment doesn't stop when you die. It certainly diminishes over time, but it doesn't stop. Yeah. But yourself doing the cognition thing, the body part, does. Mm -hmm. How you want to take that is obviously bringing in religion, which I want to completely avoid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. So I'm just going to that, leave. That's it why. There. I, that's why I specifically said your legacy, not what happens after you die, because that yeah. that we are leaving that a freaking that is just that's not in a box. That is in a locked a prison safe <laughs> on an island on an island. <laughs> At the bottom of the sea, how it's at an, on, an, an <laughs> island at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> yes, Atlantis. Yay! There you go. We're, we're going to put it into Atlantis. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> first, you've got to fucking find it first. And then once we find it, then we're kind of in trouble. That metaphor did not work and it got carried away with me. But let's just put it in I a love, parallel I love, universe. I love well. how you and I can go from really high level conversations to stupid shit. <laughs> in literally. It's refreshing for the audience. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna bring in a couple of the uh, examples that could bring in some moral like moral dilemmas. Ooh. Yeah. So one of them is a theoretical one that was based in Andy Clark's first uh, first expression of extended mm. cognition which he uses a name called otto uh, are you familiar with the the analogy i think so yeah so otto is someone with alzheimer's and he uses a notepad to remember things yes. yeah i remember this one yeah uh, and then there is another person that uses their memory and they want to go to a place call it a library um, and they need to find the address well one person has remembered it in their heads and otto because he's got alzheimer's has written it down on a notepad now if that person that's using the memory is drunk or goes on drugs or has like gets hit in the head that's abuse that's brain damage and they will forget the information and we know okay Okay, that's that's bad memory for whatever reason. There's there's a cause to that. If someone takes Otto's notebook, it's it's just a notebook. Oh, it doesn't matter. But it's the same thing because it's where he stored the information. So is taking Otto's notebook mental abuse towards Otto because he now can't remember where that place is? That's that's the question that was uh, brought up uh, in in the paper, and that's where extended cognition comes in and everything that we sort of explained. And that's a, a moral argument. But that's a theoretical example. What what are your takes on on that? Yes, it is. I believe it is. Because from my perspective with autism and being on the spectrum and how my brain works differently in my unique ways and seeing that experience from my wife with ADHD and my kids with various forms of um, ASD. 
it all affects us differently and we all have different tools that help us by taking away those tools we are taking away part of our own brains and their own way of working it is a i feel a personal attack on who we are on who we are as human beings because we use those tools we use those solutions which is why i believe linking back to productivity being personal being back to business being personal leading back to all of those things that i talk about on my like with my business i feel that by taking any aspect that you use to help you to remember things away by not having something that fits you and finding you is a form of abuse hands down that this is not a, like to me i don't view this as a d discussion this is how it is in my head because you're taking away something that helps people to function in a way that they want to to be able to move around the world to be able to navigate the world to be able to remember things that are important to them so i had the same thought and then i was like okay where do I draw the line because of extended cognition? Where do I draw the line? Is it the notebook that you use? Is it the notebook that you had that you may reference? Is it the environment you're in that has the cues that help you remember? Is it the people that you're surrounded with that help you do whatever it is and think the way that you do in the environment? Where, where do you draw that line to abuse? <laughs> now, I don't expect there to be an answer because that's an extremely complicated question. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> And, and that's where the theory is, extended cognition, okay, if other things are part of our cognition, phones being a perfect example, which I'll get to a, a real life example in a minute, phones being a perfect example, okay, where, where, where do you draw the line to that's extended cognition, or that's just something in the environment that's helping me in cognition? What's that definition? And that's where the theory needs to be somehow applied into practice, which is, mm. there's no answer to. So... What are your initial thoughts on that? Where would you initially think to go in your maybe just questioning? Yeah, it's a good question. And like you said, one that doesn't have an easy answer, one that I cannot pinpoint where, like, <laughs> there's a side of me that's like anything. But that is impractical. Exactly. But just because it's impractical does not mean it is true that's that's the thing like and then that holds another if you involve other humans with their own things then it becomes even more infinitely complex because you have other people with their own cognition and it becomes this tangled web of bollocks that no one can come up with a good answer for i think i believe that it is to the best of your ability like, so I don't talk about this very often because it's God filled with so much crap around the internet, but I'm vegan. So I fundamentally believe, in my opinion, that eating animals isn't good. However, there are certain aspects and environments and situations where I'm going to have to have a car that has some form of leather in it. Now, I would prefer to buy second hand because then it's less damaging. It is where possible it is to limit the damage that is being made i cannot completely get rid of it but i wish to limit it to the degree that i can and that is all i can do as one human being and i think this concept to me links directly to this it's to the best extent that you can do not cause do not remove cognition when it does not harm other people as well it's do less harm interesting you, you said other people as well uh so for me like i i try to associate this with groups of people family being an obvious one um or just like close friends <clears throat> if if someone in a group uh is taken away for whatever reason or they leave like just in their own own fruition they just leave the room or whatever um the cognition the ability to cognitively function in that room arguably according to extended cognition is a, is impacted whether that's negatively positively it's impacted because of the other people in the room so uh, a practical example you may say something in a different way because that person is no longer there mm -hmm. you know, just as a 
a, a tangible example to use, in which case that person being arrested arguably would be abuse on the members of the family, which we all feel. We all feel the stress when our family member or a friend or whatever is, is taken or whatever. So we all feel that. So where, where the line is suddenly then goes, okay, well, if everyone, everyone in that circle feels it as potential abuse on, on cognitive, uh, of, on their extended cognition or whatever they're feeling, well, you, you can't base laws on how deeply someone feels that they are offended or impacted, which is the other side of the argument. Well, we can't use extended cognition in laws and morals, et cetera, because well, actually everything could be extended cognition, which means there is no line. So laws try to, not very well, um, say body, like you, the person, the thing, like the brain part, and they forget extended cognition. But with the uh, Alzheimer's example and with loads of other neurodivergent examples, people can't function. And a couple of examples I'll give in a minute. They, people can't function without those extended elements. And that's just that's yeah. just the argument. Yeah. There's no. <laughs> yeah. There's no right answer. So one of the examples which I think most people will be able to relate to um, mm. is a is a Evan. phone. <laughs> no, it, it's it's a phone. So someone was stopped. Um, this happens all over the place. But I, I was listening to a lecture for an Ed, Edinburgh lecture. It's on YouTube if you want to have a look. Um, but someone was stopped in their car, uh, and a policeman searched their phone for information, uh, and they they went to court because there was information on there that was damning. Uh, and the argument that the individual, the phone had was sort of theoretically saying, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to search my phone without a search warrant. Like, you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, and their argument, theoretically speaking, is you don't give, a, you don't put a, a probe in my brain w without my, without my say so. You, you, you don't put like probes and things in my brain to see how I'm going to react, how I don't react. So why should you do that to my phone? Because my phone is part of my memory. We, we don't remember phone numbers because it's on our phone. And, and, and that was the, that was the mm. argument that they had. I can't remember he, whether he won or lost, but it's an interesting point. Like if, if someone doesn't have authorization to go through your phone, is that the same as, putting putting a probe in someone's brain and trying to find find connections is it, is it the same thing shit exactly. that's a good question that is fascinating i mean as a parent whose kids are getting older do i have the right to look at their phone they don't have a phone and that's the thing it's like no i don't Exactly. And that is where I moved that conversation. So that conversation was law police with a person. Um, I don't know whether the person was good or bad. I can't remember. But for me, my immediate thinking is, well, kids, parents take their phones away from kids. Parents take tech away from kids. Well, is that abuse? Is that probing someone's brain if you're going through someone's account online? Mm. And I mean, obviously, we know people that hack into accounts. We, we see that as bad. But is that actually abuse? Not just not just technical hacking, but is that actually cognitive abuse? Is that the same as probing someone's brain because it's their account, it's their storage of information? Oh, that 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 is interesting. And obviously, there's no answer. But when you ask that question, everyone goes, "Ah, <laughs> I don't know." And that's and that's where uh, I've been at for the last few days. I'm like, hmm. I don't know. For me, at the moment, currently, uh, I, I see accounts and things like that. I see it as mine. I see it's part of me. And if I don't give you permission to do that, then you can't do that. Um, because I wouldn't want someone poking around in my brain. <laughs> no. No, that's interesting. Obviously, that can therefore be extended to taking someone's phone, like, just as a bit of fun. Is it fun? Is it banter? If they don't, if they haven't given you permission to do that? Uh, yeah. And then the other example, which is more of a, a concrete example in the extended okay, now We're moving away pretty quickly on that one. I'm just sat here going, that's a really good thing. It's like my family have a tendency to look over my shoulder when I'm writing and I'm typing and I'm doing stuff on my computer. And I really 
don't like it. I really don't like it. It feels like an invasion of me when I'm writing and they're watching if they haven't got permission. So yeah, for all intents and purposes, I mean, there is an aspect of safety that has to be considered for children, especially. And it's like, where do the boundaries lie? Do you trust? Or do you err on the side of caution? And it's an interesting, like, discussion. That Moral dilemmas, gotta love it's, them. It's <laughs> delightful. It is very delightful. And actually, I, I, I will extend this into the extended mind of the audience. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny. Um, what do you guys think? This should be a conversation. This is fascinating. So please let us know what you think. Tweet us both. You both know our handles by now. Um, if not, and you're a new listener, I'm if not at Danny Hatcher. Hello. Um, <laughs> at uh, Danny Hatcher at... and at Biz Simplicity. Yeah. yeah. So I'm planning on doing a video expressing a lot of this with obviously sources and citations um, on the YouTube channel. The, the plan is next week, but as you can tell, there are so, 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 so many directions I could take it in. Uh, it will be fairly shallow compared to this conversation. I will try and summarize as, as much as I can, as best as I can, probably bringing That's up lots of questions. To this episode. Yeah. Um, and it will probably bring up lots, lots more questions than answers. <laughs> uh, but have, have the, com like, have a look at the comments in that conversation. Cause I would imagine uh, e even if it doesn't do that well on my channel, the people that do comment on that will have opinions uh, and sharing those opinions in the comment section. Uh, yeah, it might help the video, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's more about the conversation. Um, just literally contribute to those. And a lot of my videos uh, at the moment are sort of moving in that direction. The comment sections are great places to have a look at people's opinions on it. Um, so yeah, I, 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 there needs to be a community talking about extended extended cognition, not building a second brain, extended cognition and the moral dilemmas that it actually may have in laws and how we act, what we do and behaviors that we have, which is what I said right at the beginning. Yeah. Because I don't know. <laughs> can, can I give the, the concrete example? Yeah. So this one is a little bit, a little bit different and it's extremely extremely unique so there is an individual that is colorblind okay and they see colors through sound right so they have a device that is basically it's put on the head it's a microphone and it allows them to hear different sounds and as you can imagine that device would therefore be part of their extended cognition because it's part of how he perceives information now, when he was going to a concert, I think it was a concert, he was going out in public, the police said, you need to take that off, you can't record this, this thing. And he said, no, it's not a recording device, I use it to see colour. Uh, and the police didn't believe him, and they took the thing off his head and said, you can't wear that in here. And the guy was kind of obviously frustrated, but it was, it was damaged, the device was damaged. And in court, he then said, well, this thing, I can't see well without this thing. This person damaged this thing. Therefore, they damaged me. It is abuse. He won the argument, I believe, uh, in court and said, yeah, that's abuse. And then they got like all the law stuff set with that. But that was that's a more concrete example of extended cognition in saying, well, this person see like sees through this device, like literally sees through the device and it was taken off him <laughs> and i'm just like what i mean yes that's a very unique example and it, a fairly extreme example but it's much more concrete than a phone Whoa. <laughs> what, what what are your initial feelings yeah it's abuse it is it is he he yeah 
I, I feel sorry for him, even though it's like this yeah. microphone that's on top of his head. I feel sorry for him. There's even a picture um, in the presentation of his passport. It it's either his passport or his driving license has a picture with this microphone thing on top of his head because it's how he sees. And he's like, there's no point me taking a picture without it because I always wear it because I don't see without it. Yeah. And it's, <sighs> but when you think about the amount of the, the different technology that could be coming out moving forwards, how do people police that like if you're in a crowd of people and someone has an earphone in and that earpiece allows them to hear like like we've already got now like hearing aids and you're dancing around and someone bumps you and then stands on your hearing aid is that abuse is that deliberate is it not what's the like where, where's the intention to that or if someone has deliberately like hit you in the side of the head knowing that you've got something there is that worse than just hitting you slapping you like so I th- I was uh, listening to a podcast, which I need to remember what it's called right now. So you're going to go into Notion search uh, and find it? <laughs> you're funny! <laughs> you're so funny! No. Uh, Hidden Brain. They're doing a series as part of the podcast called, like, Mind Reading. And around how we portray the things that we do so it's like so the example that was given in the episode that i was i was listening to was around someone who accidentally poisons someone they're making a cup of tea and they put some white powder in there thinking it was sugar but it's actually poison versus someone i think it's just a hypothetical question not actually happening i think i think i see where Um, this is going versus someone who tried to who thought that sugar was poison but didn't poison them and i think it's intention like my view of that is the intention if you are intending to kill someone or intending to harm someone or intending to damage them and cause damage I believe whether you do or you don't, that is abusive. But I also know the fatal flaw in my argument. How can you tell? I think you said that because you saw my reaction. Because I was like, yes, Um, I'm glad you said intention because it was discussed. And it's been discussed in lots of different places around extended cognition. Intention requires knowledge and understanding, right? We've yeah. obviously spoken about knowledge and understanding. So if you don't understand the impact something has to someone and you do something, <laughs> because if you don't, like as a, as a parent, going back to the child example, if you're a parent and you don't understand what the child what the phone means to the child, how it impacts the child, then is it abuse? Because you don't understand how it impacts them because you don't, you don't know their interaction with that device. So I think there, the inter- and bear in mind, my biases, I'm a parent, so yeah. biases right in front of me. If you do not know, in the first instance that it is harming them then your intentions are pure you didn't realize however however if you re- if you know it hurts them and you do it as a power play then you are intending to pun it we call it punish your child but really the truth is you're hurting them to get them to do what you want which i may get some (laughs) some flack for that i am so glad you said that because that's the exact that that that's almost the exact same like train thought i went on Uh, and this is where um negative reinforcement versus punishment comes into learning and education and the way i see this is if you're punishing someone it's not as useful as negative reinforcement but taking this into extended cognition um negative reinforcement and punishment in the app space or the tech space or the device space well 
are we punishing people by taking away apps by taking away features by not by by impacting how how, how things work so <clears throat> uh, a, a, a more concrete example when notion servers go down or google servers go down no they can't help it but is that still punishment is it still like no. is it still damage on us it's unintentional unintentional damage but it's still damage I guess. Exactly. Like yes. in my head, even though it's even though it's unintentional, it's still damage. Like if if you shoot a bullet in the sky and it hits someone on the so other side. So basically, of the world... <laughs> everyone who uses Notion can go sue Notion for the because of intentional damage. Please note, I realize people from Notion listen to this podcast. Well, it could be I am not like saying to go sue Notion for crying out loud. Please do not. Please do not. It could be extended <laughs> to any app, but the, the point is, like, if you shoot a bullet in the sky and it hits someone on the other side of the world, you didn't intend to shoot someone, but you no. did. So it's still damage. Uh, and it is, but this this is like the tech companies, all of the tech companies. That it's a responsibility they have. Like, if their services go down, you are damaging, cognitively damaging, depending on how you use the word abuse. Uh, people, if it goes down, and if things aren't safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so how how those discussions happen in court i have no idea um because it's it's not intended but you know it could happen so then you bring in the argument of neglect what are you neglecting privacy neglecting this that and the other and um, and then with that like yeah then moving that conversation forward a little bit i'll let you say something in there in a second when it comes to neglect if i don't have a password on my phone and someone looks at my phone is that neglect by me to protect myself? <laughs> this pause is me thinking. <laughs> because it would be the same as a tech company not putting in appropriate privacy policies and procedures and safety mechanisms I, for their own devices. I guess so. Th this is my logic. But it's not necessarily true or false. It's just my train of thought that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. And obviously, these are injunctions that I, there are no answers to. And this is why I'm like, how do I do a video on this? Because <laughs> these are all questions that I go, yeah, I don't know. I've hit, a, I've hit a roadblock. And it's not like I'm good in science because science doesn't say anything. Science just says, yeah, um, law is continually evolving. And this is where, for me... I bias towards ecological dynamics and information processing because there isn't an answer. There, there's no answer to this. It's not a, oh yeah, I'm just going to go to my memory store uh, to remember what I do in this situation. Yeah, no, don't work like that. <laughs> you got to work on the environment and the constraints and affordances you have in that situation. Yeah. But there's no answer. Dude, this is beautiful. I love this conversation. This is great. It's probably a really bad podcast because I'm just sat here going, let me ponder. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see the gerbil running around in the... In the, in the mm. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. It's a really interesting idea that does not have an answer, which I do love those questions that don't have an answer. They're more interesting. The thing is, though, these, these questions don't have a concrete answer. They have lots of different answers depending on the context you ask the questions in. Which yes. is literally by definition, almost, ecological dynamics and not information processing, but everyone assumes inf information processing theory. And this is like moving again. Extended cognition is this one little thing that we've spoken about, but it extends into almost everything that we know about experiential learning, which is literally learning, which is everything <laughs> that, that we do when it comes to communicating with other people. So it's not this small little thing that's separate, it's everything together, which is what I tried to express in the Zettelkasten video with my concepts. It's not a small discrete concept, it's a whole thing, it's a whole narrative, a whole story. Yeah. 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 That That is, yeah. And I think that's where Obsidian, like if we, if we round it right back up to the apps, I think this conversation sums up why I moved to Obsidian. It wasn't necessarily the features of Notion versus Obsidian. 
it was the entire way that it it functioned closer to how I thought and how I wanted to think and how to changing something in obsidian and i assume to an extent roam as well all of the networked thought apps which notion is not one of them sorry um <laughs> that's just like i can i can hear it <laughs> I can you can do this and you can do that and blah 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 yeah, okay whatever yeah no. um got a prison like, in the net <laughs> Yeah, go to prison. Right. We put we Let's put something on an island underneath. <laughs> we we put something on an island underneath water. So <laughs> <laughs> So as I was saying when Mantis. I want to change something in in Obsidian and the networked apps as well, I can just do so. Like it is not hard to change things and it it's more of a natural growth in obsidian and apps such as whereas in tools like notion where there are self-imposed boundaries that you must make for the app to be effective i believe you have to keep thinking and rebuilding your notion often the common criticism from every other person outside of notion is they spend more time building their notion than actually doing stuff <laughs> which to be fair is not exactly a lie because as we develop as human beings our systems have to change because our systems are what we do and if what we do changes the things that we use need to change unless you have something that grows over time in which case it's different, but making something that grows over time in Notion is far harder because the boundaries shift and change and mold and adapt and flex, which is why there isn't an argument against having an all-in-one app, because an all-in-one app is very static. It is a thing, an object that does not change. And so I feel from the... Using using tools and using technology and this extends to the the physical things that are in my room like i have this light to the side of me that i bought recently it's a, a ring light a razor ring light which is lovely by the way um which makes me being able to slot my phone which is attached to attached to my phone now to attached to me now into this stand and i can just record a very quick instagram or tiktok or whatever video here could also have it as a secondary camera if i ever want to do other things as well i think that the apps and the tools need to work with yourself and not understanding how you work and being able to have something that is flexible and adaptable is really important mm. yes Yes, I agree. Yes. Should we should we leave it on that one? Yeah, let's leave it on that one. Yeah. Because yep. uh, because I think both of our brains have gone. <laughs> I could just feel my brain cell, my brain going, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm overloaded now. Okay, okay, wrap it up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, now. no, I'm, 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 I'm on the point where I want to, I want to talk, but I don't think it would be beneficial. Yes, that's where I am. That's that's where I kind of got about halfway through that conversation. I, I would need to open up the boxes, and you I don't open, open up the boxes up. yet. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the lids lids on them for the moment. I I, I may bring up I may bring up a box uh, in a couple of weeks, um, but we will see. Yeah, I'm I'm going to keep e ecological dynamics calmly boxed over there. I'm going to try and refrain using the terms used. Um, for for another for another conversation because we we briefly went into it was it last week or the week before last week yeah so in other words the episode that yeah last week's episode which is today's episode when we're recording yeah um i briefly went into it there so if you're curious listening to this and didn't listen to that go listen to that um but it it, it confusing if you don't get it uh but yeah so bye um, bye everyone <laughs> <laughs>